In going to India, I was looking for somebody that could read the maps of my consciousness. I found Maharaji. He was the map. I met Maharaji in a little temple in the mountains, the Himalayas. I had been traveling with a young Westerner who had been in India for many months. And so he know, knew his way around. So I took him in the Land Rover up the mountains to meet Neem Karoli Baba. Uh, against his will, he was really uptight, angry, didn't want to go. <laughs> was giving me a hard time, was mad because I was driving. He wanted to drive. <laughs> we stopped on the way about a um, hundred miles from the um, temple. And we stopped, and I, um, I went outside from the house, and I, uh, the stars, the, like, stars, Van Gogh, those stars. And I thought of my mother. She was dead six months. And then I went inside, and... We went on to the Guru. Ramdas uh, first met Maharaji right here. Maharaji was sitting here with his, all these devotees were here, and he came here with Bhagwan Das. So uh, it is a tradition here just to bow down before a saint. So uh, Bhagwan Das bowed down and pranamed, but Ramdas was a bit hesitating. He's laying on his belly. On the floor, on the ground, uh, touching the, f the feet of the guru, and uh, I was Harvard professor. Uh, I wasn't going to go up and touch somebody's feet. He had his hands in his pockets and uh, just watching, and so he said. Um, Come, come, this. Sit down. Then he said, you were, you were out under the stars thinking of your mother last night. Which, which, I mean, a Harvard professor, you know, Think, knowing, having been in cognitive research and stuff like that, no, but nothing made me ready for that. You were remembering your mother. She died of spleen. And that was the breakthrough. That was the quieting my mind. Quieting my mind. You know, it's like Jesus when he met the woman at the well and told her everything she'd ever done. That's what Maharaji would do. He would tell us everything that we'd been doing in the last parts of our lives. <laughs> You're thinking, wow, he knows everything. When Maharaji was near me, I was bathed in love. And because he knew everything about me, that was like I was forgiven. I think prior to that, I had a lot of uh, things in my past um, I, I didn't want anybody to know, no. And I always felt that if they knew, they would, they wouldn't love me. He knew, and he loved me. And then he was transformed into Baba Ramdas before my very eyes. He just turned into this love, just started pouring. He just totally opened his heart and got into his heart. It was so beautiful. It was so beautiful. It was so beautiful. 
How do I explain who Maharaji was and how he did what he did? Um, I don't have any explanation. Um, maybe it was his love of God. I can't explain who he was. I can almost begin to understand how he loved everybody. I mean, that was sort of his job. He was a saint. Saints are supposed to love everybody. That's not what has always so staggered me. What staggered me is not that he loved everybody, but that when I was sitting in front of him, I loved everybody. That was the hardest thing for me to understand. How he could so totally transform the spirit of people who were with him and bring out not just the best in us, but something that wasn't even in us, we didn't know. I don't think any of us were ever as good or as pure or as loving in our whole life as we were when we were sitting in front of him. I see him just as a, um, as a doorway towards God, a doorway. His consciousness was so playful with mine, it sucks you in. In India, they have an expression, God, Guru, and Self are one and the same. He's just like my inner self. The most common word that he ever said was Ram, God's name, and the second most common was Jao, get out of here. Um, and all the Westerners who would come to him uh, attracted like a magnet, he would always say, go away, go away, go away, go away. No, I don't think he wanted anything ever from me or, or from any of us. Um, we tried to give him things. Uh, you couldn't give him money, you, you, could, you couldn't do anything for him, uh, there was nothing that he needed. All he wanted was for people to be liberated, to be free. One day, um, Maharaji ind indicated that he'd like to um, try LSD. And I... Um, I didn't know that that was wise because he was old and I had strong pills. But then he knew everything, so I got pills I had in my bag and he selected the pills and um, one pill would have been a, a dose for a person like me. He took all the pills at once. Nothing happened. He didn't have any reaction. I watched, I watched, and I watched. Nothing happened. And what he was saying to me in his manner as the mirror, he was saying, it's in you, it's in you. The, 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 the way we get caught in our method is Method, drugs, method, church, method, you know, method, method, method. Um, that he got me out of my caughtness in my method, in my method. So I honored psychedelics, but I say there's other methods. Maharaji gave me the name Ramdas. Somebody told me that, and I said, is good? And they said, yeah, Ram is God, and Das is servant, servant of God. I waited till I was alone with Maharaji. And um, I said, how do I get enlightened, Maharaj? And he said, serve people 
and feed people. I was, here I come from America, and I was, you know, here was the, the guru, serve people, feed people. When Richard returned from India, he flew into uh, Logan Field in Boston, and my father went to pick him up. Now, keep in mind, my father had been president of the New Haven Railroad, and he was accustomed to wearing a Homburg hat and a Chesterfield coat and very spiffy clothes and polished shoes. And he went up to the gate and sees Richard coming off the plane with a sheet on, barefooted, and a big long beard. And he said, oh my God, and he jumped back into his car. <laughs> and uh, Richard finally made his way to the car. I think my father was probably confused for two weeks trying to figure out what had happened. Our family life, we've not, I've never had the situation where I said to any, any of my three boys, you've got to do this or you've got to do that. Uh, Richard, uh, well, you're following, you call, you call Baba or something or other. <laughs> but uh, uh, he has a very definite mind of his own, and he makes his decisions on what he thinks is right and true. And uh, I don't think uh, he'll be influenced by anything that I say. Uh, about his uh, future uh, any more than he's been influenced in the past. Uh, when he was a youngster, I had certain ideas as to what I thought I'd like to see him do. <laughs> he didn't do them. <laughs> when Richard came back from India and he would come to visit us in uh, Franklin, New Hampshire, hundreds of hippies came to visit us. If we go out to dinner, as we drive in... Uh, I'd say, Richard, what are all these people walking up the road toward our place? I'd say, well, those are some of the people that want to see me. And by the time we'd get back, there'd be maybe two, three, four hundred people all over the place. And I said, Richard, get them off the golf course.